Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. My name's Richard and you're watching Loch Noor Smithy Off Grid. Now a few months ago, back in April, I did a video on static caravan planning. Now quite a few people shared it on Facebook and it's now at over 25,000 views. Um, the most common question that keeps coming up is about the certificate of lawfulness. Now I've not really covered this yet, I know a few other people have covered it on YouTube, so there is other videos out there. But there's a lot of confusion about a certificate of lawfulness, especially for a caravan. Now, you can get a four-year and one-day rule certificate of lawfulness, or a ten-year and one-day rule certificate of lawfulness. Now, the primary difference is, for a static caravan, you need to go for the ten-year and one-day rule. So your static caravan or your touring caravan has got to be sighted permanently for at least 10 years and one day. Now, that's a very long time. Now for other things like a dwelling house, so let's say you built a roundhouse in the woods, like a famous YouTuber has, Chris Harbour Natural Building. So you build your roundhouse in the woods, which isn't hidden, it's not concealed. Once that's been there for four years and one day, then you can apply for your certificate of lawfulness. Um, there are other things that you can apply for a certificate of lawfulness for. It's not just for dwellings. If you've got land and you've changed it to equestrian, or if you've got land and you've hardcored it and changed it into a yard or a gypsy site or something like that, that would come under the 10-year and one-day rule. So you'd got to have broken basically any planning conditions or changed the use for at least 10 years and one day and you'd have to prove that. Now, for the four year and one day rule, let's say you've built a roundhouse in the woods or you've got a stone barn or something or an existing stable block that's been there for 10 years or more and you convert that into a house. Now, that's four years and one day, but you've got to prove it. Um, one of the main ways of proving it is to put yourself on the council tax register as soon as you move in and apply for, for council tax and pay it. The problem with that is that some planning authorities, the guy putting it on the council tax register will know what you've done and he'll shop you. So he'll report you straight to the planners and they'll come out and you're not even going to get a standing start. Now, you know, that's a bit of a, a bit of a funny situation because if you don't put yourself on the council tax register and after for 10 years, say for a caravan, you apply for your certificate of lawfulness, the planners are going to report you to the council tax and they can come back after you for 10 years because in that application for certificate of lawfulness, you're going to put that you've lived there for 10 years. So they're going to want 10 years council tax and you're going to have to pay it. Even if you don't get your certificate of lawfulness, they're still going to want that council tax. So let's say you live in a caravan and you've lived in it for 10 years and one day. Now, what are they going to want to know to, to give you the certificate of lawfulness? Well, the first thing that the planners go on is the overhead maps. So Google Maps is a good one. There's another one that's a bit more accurate, which is getmapping.com. If you do a Google search, their website's a bit weird. It's, I think it's getmapping, then the number one, dot com. Now that will show you overhead images of your land, your field, whatever, for the last 10 years. So it will show like your caravan being there. Now your caravan being there doesn't mean that you've lived in it. So that's a good start to, to get your overhead images to prove for your certificate of lawfulness that that has been there. They will ask all sorts of things. So if you've got mains electricity, electric bills, bank statements, Another good thing, see when you move in, order a brand new tally out of Argos, etc. You'll immediately get reported to TV licensing and pay your TV license. So, you know, those sorts of things. You can get an affidavit signed off a neighbour, a friend, so somebody saying that they came to your, your 30th birthday party and you're now 40. Um, another thing that seems to be quite common these days is people charting the progress on both YouTube and Facebook. So say you tow your static caravan on, on YouTube, you're renovating it, you're connecting it to the services. 
you show yourself moving in with your cardboard boxes, you know, show yourself living there and you chart your progress on, on YouTube and then 10 years later you've got all the evidence and all them videos which is fairly indisputable. Now we can get all this evidence etc. The one dirty trick that the planning officer that's looking into your certificate of lawfulness will try is they'll try and say that you haven't had continuous occupation of that dwelling or that caravan. And what they'll do is they'll check the council tax register for different areas, different recent regions to see if you've been renting a house, see if you own another house, see if you've been living elsewhere. They'll, they'll do a search on you, like a credit search, and they'll try everything to prove that you haven't continuously lived in that dwelling. They'll speak to your neighbours, they'll, they'll try everything to refuse it. Now, quite a few people have been successful in, in getting a certificate of lawfulness but you've got to do everything right. You've got to, you know, keep documentary evidence, you know, even keep receipts for building materials. You know, if you use a removal van or your hire van to move into your caravan or your house, keep those receipts, do you know what I mean? If you've been renting a house or if you owned a house before you moved in, in there, you know, obviously you'll have the, the bill of sale from when you sell the house, you'll have the solicitor's paperwork, you know, um, if you've been renting a house, you'll have paperwork where your deposit's been returned, etc. So all that's good to prove the actual date that you started living there. So one thing I've been asked a few times is, where does a caravan become a dwelling? And that's quite a good one. Quite a lot of people have asked me this. There's a bit of a myth been going around on the internet that people say, if you cut the drawbar and cut the wheels off a static caravan, it's no longer a caravan, it's now a dwelling, so you come under the four-year and one-day rule. Well, that's bollocks. So let's get that out of the way to start off with. The only way I know of a caravan becoming a dwelling is if it can't be moved in two halves. So, you know, under the Caravan Act, you can have a building up to 60 foot by 20 foot, to be classed as a caravan, but it must be able to be moved. And that inclu includes using a crane or a lorry to lift it in two halves. Now, a lot of people modify static caravans, you know, they renovate them. So say you put like a brick foundation under your caravan, you clad it in wood all the way around with a new frame, a new roof, like a tin roof. You build an extension for a bathroom and a utility room. That's, that's a really common modification, especially if you're you're trying to live in a static caravan, they're not the easiest to live in, they're quite small. You know, so you build a conservatory off one side, you build like a utility block off it, new roof, that's totally immovable. Do you know what I mean? It, especially if you're using bricks and blocks, stuff that can't just be cut up and taken away. You'll still have problems with the planners getting this certificate of lawful use. It won't be easy, but if you make that caravan into a dwelling, so it's it's clearly not just a holiday caravan anymore that can be towed or winched off site, then you can call that a dwelling and you can have a lot more success trying to get it under the four year and one day rule. Now, people have talked about certificate of lawful uses or lawfulnesses for making a barn into a dwelling. Now, one way that people fail if you apply for an agricultural barn under the prior approval process, but you build a house instead, or you build a barn conversion from day one, you will fail. You won't be able to get that under the four years and one day rule. What will happen is the planners will say that you've not complied with your original proposal. So you built a house from scratch and Basically, they'll say it's 14 years. Now, I'll just explain that in more depth. So, what they'll say is, you're, you were, you've applied under prior approval to build a barn. You've built that barn, but under the Class Q for converting that barn into a house, that barn needs to have stood for 10 years. So, they'll add you four years and one day onto the 10 years. And they'll say that, that it needs to have been built for 14 years before you can get a certificate of lawful use. And what they'll do is they'll make you revert that barn back into a barn, not a house. So that will scupper you completely. So 
if you're going down that route of converting something on your small holding into a dwelling, you really want it to be stables that have been built without planning permission, or they've been there for at least 10 years, and then you convert them and prove that you've converted them. You need lots of evidence, you know, like receipts from builders when you're doing the work, receipts from the builders, merchants, you know, take photos, videos, stick your videos on Facebook. Even if you've got a Facebook account that you've only got two friends on, and you put videos on every week, you can go back, you can screenshot that, you can record it as evidence for the planners. You can document your evidence on YouTube. Now, you don't have to do that for the world to see. You can, you can open a YouTube account and you can list those videos as private. So only people that you want to see can see them. So the world doesn't get to see that and people shop you. So, you know, that's, that's a few ways of getting a certificate of lawfulness. It's not as reliable as people have portrayed. You know, it's not that easy to get. Um, the planners will try dirty tricks all along. You know, you put a static caravan on your land, the planners will come out and they'll try and get you to put a planning application in for that caravan. Now, it depends which way you want to go. So some people, if you've got a caravan on your land, planners come out, some people will say, well, I'm not actually living in it to try and avoid having to move it. Now, the planners won't accept that unless you give them a written letter. So say they come out, you've got a caravan on your yard. They say, well, you need to put a plan application in. You say, I'm not living in it. They'll say, right, well, either give us a letter saying you're not living in it, or, you know, we'll serve you with basically a, a, a notice to move it. You go back. 10 years later and say, oh, that caravan's been there for 10 years and I've lived in it, they'll have a letter off you saying that you didn't live in it. So these are the tricks that the planners try all the way down the route to stop you getting the certificate of lawfulness. Now, if you they, they turn up, you've got a caravan, say you've been living in it for a year, you can't get a certificate of lawfulness, so they'll say, you need to put a planning application in. And that's like the most common fa fa phrase of a planning officer, is they turn up and say, well, to regulate the situation, you need to put in a planning application. Now, you might be running a bona fide business that you can prove accounts, you know, you're building your little business up. So they'll let you put a planning application in, and almost definitely they'll give you a temporary grant of planning permission. So it'll stay to a period of three years normally. Now, the cat's just photobombed this video. So they'll give you a temporary planning, perm planning permission, and at the end of that three years, I'll expect you to apply for planning permission to move that static caravan and build a house. Now, let's say you just totally ignore the planners. After three years, you carry on as normal. And then you come to submit a certificate of lawfulness. Now, that 10 years and one day doesn't start when you put the caravan there or when you started living in it. Where that starts is where your planning application expired, so where you committed a new breach of planning. So let's say on the 1st of September 2010, you moved your caravan there. Three years later, let's say, the planners turn up and they catch you for living in the caravan. You submit a planning application, say on the 1st of September 2013, now that planning application will probably roll on for nearly a year. So let's say they grant you planning permission on the 1st of September 2014 for a period of three years. Now that would run out on the 1st of September 2017. So then you would have to wait until the 1st of September, well, the 2nd of September 2027 to get your certificate of lawfulness unless you turned that caravan into a dwelling, so you converted it in the meantime, then it would be four years on one day. So I know that's all a bit confusing, but it's a confusing topic. A lot of people try and do videos on this and they try and gloss over it. But when you come down to static caravans, when you come down to converting buildings into dwellings, it is quite a difficult topic, it's quite confusing, and the planners will try everything to stop you getting that certificate of lawfulness. They will absolutely try everything. Now, a cautionary note, there was a guy called Robert, uh, Robert Fiddler, Mr. Fiddler, 
and he built a castle. You'll find most of the articles on Google if you type in Robert Fiddler Castle. Um, what he did, he owned a farm, I think it was about 50 acres down in England, and he'd got beef cattle and he's also got a lorry business. I believe he bought and sold lorries as well from this, this small holding. He had existing buildings there, he had a stone barn and he had a couple of grain silos. Now, instead of applying for change of use for the barn and building a small house, you know, converting it into a small house, he thought he'd use his four years and one day loophole to um, basically con the planners. So what he did, he built a massive stack of straw bales, big Heston bales, covered them in tarpaulins and tyres. He converted the barn, built a, his two grain silos, he built around them in red bricks, made them into turrets, which looked ridiculous and built this massive house behind a stack of straw bales. Now, a lot of people think he didn't get caught. In the four year period, the planners did video uh, visit him a couple of times. One time he got shopped by the teacher because his, his son went to school and drew a picture of this big castle hidden behind straw bales. So the planners went out, but they couldn't find the house. So it was quite, quite a clever man, but just not clever enough. So they never found his house. After four years and one day, he submitted his certificate of lawfulness for his house and he pulled down the straw bales and they were rotten by then and he unveiled this house. But the thing is, it basically went viral on, on media. Social media was just starting out just then. And, you know, the Daily Mail in, in particular, they really took up the, the article and because he was so much in the media and so publicised, he didn't have a chance of getting the certificate of lawfulness. If he did, it would have just left a free-for-all for every man and his dog just to build houses, surround them with straw bales and get away with it. Now, the reason he failed, and the only reason he failed, because he'd, he'd done everything right, he'd got all his paperwork right, he could prove everything. The only reason he failed is it was deliberate concealment. Now, when he started down the road, of building this house, there was nothing to do with deliberate concealment in the planning laws. So they basically shafted him, the planners did, and the government, because he went to high court, he went to appeal, he did everything right, but they decided because he had deliberately concealed it and hidden it, that he couldn't keep his dwelling. Now, there was another case of somebody else down in England that had a stable yard and built a house but what he did he built a wooden cabin in the woods and because it was in the woods the planners deemed that he hadn't deliberately concealed it so after four years and one day because it wasn't a caravan it was a cabin he you know proper foundations he'd built it properly it hadn't been built in sections it couldn't easily be moved you, you know so he built it himself from scratch after four years and one day he got his certificate of lawfulness so if you're looking at doing something like this, I've run through like the do's and don'ts, how are you going to get caught, how the planners are going to argue against it. And I just hope this video was useful. Now, if you've not done already, jump on my other videos. I'll put a link down in the description. I've done one on static caravan planning, suggesting how you can put a static caravan on land, on agricultural land, without putting a planning application in. Now, Love it if everybody can drop us a comment down below. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. If you don't mind sharing my videos on Facebook, I'm sure there's other people interested in this subject, especially the static caravan planning video. People people seem to like that video. We've got quite a few likes, a lot of comments, you know, 25,000 views. Now, I'm just gonna wind this video up here. As I say, I'll put links in the description down below to my other videos. Hope everybody keeps well. Hope everybody's keeping safe in COVID. And me and Bob are going to say bye. And we'll see you again on the next one. Thank you, folks.